In our second year as a proud federal partner with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in the implementation of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service continues to make great strides implementing the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Our Office of Law Enforcement recently acquired two mobile inspection systems known as X-ray bands charged with the responsibility of protecting and conserving native and foreign wildlife through the enforcement of federal laws. The service's wildlife inspection program inspects cargo at some of the largest ports in the United States. The new X-ray vans are custom built for on-site mobile inspection of high volumes of freight from cargo plane pallets and railroad cars to intermodal containers that travel via cargo ship. Each unit has a computerized x-ray inspection and screening software that optimizes a wildlife inspector's ability to identify questionable cargo. With one x-ray van placed in the Midwest region and the other in the Northeast, the vans are a tremendous asset for wildlife inspectors in their efforts to detect wildlife smuggling and interdict invasive species coming into the Great Lakes Basin. Another exciting project that we have out in the field for the first time are two Merlin avian radar systems. The shorelines, islands, and offshore areas of the Great Lakes provide excellent wind resources for wind power development. However, the shorelines and open water areas are also important habitat for many bird and bat species, particularly during the migration season. We have a larger effort on the part of the Fish and Wildlife Service is to foster wind energy development that is wildlife friendly. The new avian radar units are currently traveling throughout the Great Lakes to identify areas where wind projects may be developed without disturbing bird and bat migration routes. Each unit has an operator's cabin that houses the monitors for both vertical and horizontal scanning radars. Five computers are used to collect and record data, which will be analyzed and incorporated into a spatial model to predict areas of relatively high and low risk for birds relative to wind power development. The data collected by these radars will be enhanced by additional monitoring actions, including acoustic and ultrasonic detectors, mist netting and bird banding, aerial and boat surveys, digitizing of historical bird observations, and modeling. Wind energy is not the only new issue that Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding has helped the service to fast track. Though discharges of toxic and persistent chemicals to the Great Lakes have been greatly reduced over the past 20 years, contaminants still residing in sediments remain a substantial risk to aquatic organisms and wildlife. In addition, there are new toxic substances entering the environment that are still being identified. Through sampling to identify chemicals of emerging concern, the Fish and Wildlife Service is working to refine what is known about the locations, concentrations, and potential adverse impacts of new contaminants, such as pharmaceuticals, to fish and wildlife. The service is working in collaboration with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the U.S. Geological Survey, and state partners. Recently collected sediment, water, and fish samples on the St. Louis River in Duluth. Sampling work was also completed by the service's New York field office in the northeastern region on the Genesee River in the Rochester Embayment area of concern. Sampling activities and data analysis will continue through the spring and early summer in areas of concern throughout the Great Lakes Basin. Identifying and reducing contaminants in the Great Lakes Basin is only one part of the restoration equation. Work must also be done to restore the Great Lakes fish populations. Agencies in the Great Lakes annually stock over 30 million juvenile fish to diversify fisheries, restore native species, and control invasive species. Little is known about the post-release survival of hatchery fish, including their actual contribution to fisheries and their natural reproduction in the wild. To learn more, the Fish and Wildlife Service is working with the Great Lakes Fishery Commission to promote the development of a basin-wide program to tag and mark all stocked juvenile fish. 
The service's Green Bay Fish and Wildlife Conservation Office started the second mass marking season on March 8th and traveled to four states to coated wire tag and fin clip Chinook salmon for stocking in the Great Lakes. Four coated wire tagging trailers, two of which were purchased with GLRI funding, were utilized. Each trailer is capable of marking up to 60,000 fish in a single eight-hour day. The trailers also provide better tag retention, more consistent tag placement, and easier tag recovery in the laboratory. The mass marking season concluded on May 13th with a total of 4.7 million hatchery rear Chinook salmon from seven hatcheries tagged and clipped at an average output of 7,250 fish per hour. 2011 is the first year that all Chinook salmon released from hatcheries into Lake Michigan and Lake Huron were mass marked, up significantly from the 1.1 million tagged and clipped in 2010. The Great Lakes provide critical habitat to many of the country's native fish and wildlife. The Great Lakes are also a valuable resource to its human residents depend on the lakes as a source of fresh water, transportation, tourism, recreation, power, and more than 1.5 million jobs. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service continues to be an active partner in implementation of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, and we look forward to sharing our ongoing accomplishments. A special thank you to EPA Regional Administrator Susan Hedman and her staff for providing the Fish and Wildlife Service this opportunity to share some of our GLRI success stories. Thank you.